Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Techno's product review. Today we have an old favorite making a return. It is the Jackery Explorer 500 Portable Power Station, a.k.a. Solar Generator. Now what's so special about the old Jackery Explorer 500 is that it's been updated with a new MPPT solar controller for faster, better solar charging. That replaces the old PWM controller that was in the Jackery line of all the older products like the 160, 240, and then the 500. But does it make any difference? Let's find out. So what comes in the box for the new Explorer 500? Well, not a whole lot. You get the AC wall charger, which is a little bit smaller than the old version. You get the 12 volt Jackery branded car charger. You get the manual, of course, and you get warranty stuff, and the typical little soft case to keep your cables. Now note there is no MC4 solar adapter in here. So if you're gonna use a non-Jackery solar panel that does not have an eight millimeter input, you're gonna need to buy a special adapter, and you can get that on hobotech.tv slash Amazon down in the adapter section. Now note the charge time in the manual is unchanged. It shows wall charger seven and a half hours, car charger 16 hours, solar panel around nine hours, and electric generator seven and a half hours. I don't understand why they even bother to say electric generator, but a lot of people don't realize, I guess, you can actually charge these things from a, a gasoline or propane or diesel generator. And also note it does say right here, that the Explorer 500 will turn off automatically in 12 hours if you don't have at least a 10 watt load. Jackery's now for the past several models have also had this feature where the LCD screen will flicker 10 times when the battery capacity gets to 20% and then again at 10%. It's basically a warning to let you know that the battery's getting low. Now I did do a review of this product 15 months ago when it first came out. If you're interested in that review, I'll go ahead and link it up here and you can check out my original review before Professor Hobo. That's right, it was before Professor Hobo was born. So the Jackery Explorer 500 sports a 518 watt hour lithium ion battery. It's NMC technology, and it's rated at 500 cycles to 80%. That does not mean that you throw it away after 500 cycles. It means that you lose the top 20% of the battery capacity over that first 500 cycles. So it's good for years and years and years. It doesn't mean that you just throw it away after 500 cycles. Now it's approximately 12 by eight by 10 at around 13 pounds. So it's very portable, very lightweight for the amount of power that you're getting. That's one of Jackery's biggest selling points. They might have an older design, but it's still one of the lightest and most portable on the market. Build quality, this is all PVC plastic with the exception of the silicone feet on the bottom. As for the design, the display is excellent. It has the typical Jackery display that shows the actual battery percentage and input and output watts. As for the inverter, it's a single outlet, 500 watt rated pure sign inverter with a thousand watt peak. And as stated before, this has an MPPT controller in it now instead of the outdated PWM controller. And there are three ways to charge. From AC wall outlet, it takes approximately seven and a half hours. From solar, it takes approximately nine hours with one of their 100 watt solar saga panels. And if you wanna charge it from 12 volt from your vehicle or another battery, it's gonna take about 16 hours. Now the Jack Explorer 500 does have three 12 volt outputs. One of them is the typical cigarette lighter car accessory output. And it does also have two six millimeter outputs. Now I've been asked many times, what's the point of these six millimeter outputs? I have no idea because it's really hard to find anything that's six millimeter. Almost everything out there, CPAP machines and other accessories are 5.5 millimeters. So I really don't know why Jackery put six millimeter ports in here. They never really explain that. As for USB outputs, this still has the old three five volt USB ports. There's no quick charge, there's no power delivery. And don't forget the fantastic flashlight. I know this is Jackery's biggest selling point. And all Jackery products sport a two year manufacturer's warranty. And of course we took the Explorer 500 into my secret laboratory and performed some pretty crazy experiments on it. And this is a Jackery Explorer 500 version two with MPPT starting voltage 13.3.
Final results, Jackery Explorer 500 version 2, 553 watt hours, 43 amp hours, total discharge time, 5 hours, 42 minutes. As you can see, the battery capacity test was a real shocker. We actually got 553 watt hours out of 518 watt hours. Now, how is that possible? Now, just to make sure those results weren't a fluke, I did run the test a second time after doing three full charge and discharge cycles just to make sure there was nothing wrong and I got almost exactly the same results. Now when I tested the original Explorer 500 last year, I got 506 watt hours out of 518 watt hours. I'm guessing this new Explorer 500 has some kind of different cells in it that have slightly more capacity. Now I don't know, is this foreshadowing what possibly is in the future for this product? Maybe the upgrade to this is going to be the Explorer 600. I don't know, but it certainly is curious. So next what I usually do is the DC output rate check. This is the check to see how much DC power can you get out of a power station. So the Jackery Explorer, like all Jackeries, have a regulated 12 volt output. This one is particularly at 13.36 volts, and that's standard across the Jackery line. Now the DC output on the Jackery is rated at 10 amps. Let's see how much we can pull from this newer 500. Here's our 10 amps, so we know it can pull 10 amps. Right, right there at 10.7, that thing died. It dropped right off, so it looks like the Explorer 500 rated at 10 amps. Really, you're not gonna be able to pull much more than 10 amps from it. Now what about the sine wave check under load? Now you can see that this has a perfectly clean sine wave. Now we'll go ahead and add a load to it. Uh, this is considered a pretty bad load. So if anything is gonna cause this sine wave to trip up, it's gonna be something like a hair dryer. So let's see. Nope. But then again, I just overloaded the jacker with the hair dryer. But you got to see that the sine wave actually is fine. And they didn't change the inverter in this uh, to my understanding, but you know, I know if I didn't test it, you guys would yell. And that takes us to the next test. Inverter capacity. Let's see how hard can we push this thing before it shuts down. So I'm going to use a hair dryer this time instead of the solar degenerator. And the reason for that is, is that this doesn't seem to like the solar degenerator. I can't really get it to 500 watts without it shutting down. What this gets it almost exactly to 500 watts. Then we can push it a little bit past that with uh, something else. I'll plug something else here and we'll see what the results are. See right there, 470 watts. Let's go ahead and plug the Explorer 300 in, and that should certainly push it to about 550. 560 watts. Okay, so I just hooked up another Jackery charger, and we have the little 160 here. Let's go ahead and plug that in. It'll give us an additional 40 watts or so. So we got this charging. Let's see what it says. So it was a little bit of a surprise. I was looking for something else to charge and in under three minutes, it shut down around a 550 watt load. So there's your answer. It can pull 500 watts pretty much indefinitely, but if you go past that, you got a couple of minutes and then that's it. So I know this can't pull over 600 watts. I've tried it many times. So you're not gonna be able to pull anything over 600 watts on this. So stick to the 500 watt range, which it's rated for. This next test is the max charge rate test where I use this variable voltage charger to determine what range of voltages can the Jackery take. Now this is important if you're planning on buying non-Jackery solar panels because we always recommend for Jackery products you actually use a Jackery solar panel because it's a perfect match. If you're going to use some third-party panel or multiples of panels, you want to know what the voltage range is. So right now we have it set to 12.1 volts, which is the standard base. That's usually where we start. And I know it's not going to charge on anything lower than that. So let's go ahead and plug it in. And it instantly charging at 38 watts. So it will charge from a regular old lead acid battery that is 50% discharge. So yes, you can charge this from your car, even with the ignition off, which is dangerous, but you can do it. Wish that display stayed on longer. So at this point, let's go ahead and turn off the voltage. We're at 13, let's get to 13.4. We're charging at 42 watts. Let's get up to 14.4. This would be a fully charged or a charging battery. 45 watts. So take it up to solar panel voltage, 18. So the baseline is 57 watts. 
we take it up to a high-end solar panel charge, and you'll see we're charging at 71 watts. Now the upper limit on the Jackery 500 is 30 volts. So let's take her all the way up to 95 watts of charging. Now let's go a little bit over 30, 30.1, and we're at 101 watts of charging. 32, okay, and then it drops to zeros. So the max rate you can charge a Jackery is about 31 volts because in anything beyond a 31 volts, it's gonna shut it down. So there we go. There's proof that you can actually charge this thing at 100 watts as long as you have a variable voltage controller that can go up to 31 volts. And as for the maximum charge rate test, as you can see, there's no change between this and the older version. Uh, the older version also supported 100 watts of charging at 31 volts. Today we're doing some real world testing using one Jackery Solar Saga 100 watt version three panel. And we have two Jackery Explorer 500s. One is the old model with PWM and the other model is the new one with MPPT. Let's see if there's any difference when we plug them into the Solar Saga 100. Do be aware that we have some pretty hazy conditions today, so we're not getting full output. Okay, let's go ahead and plug the Solar Saga 100 into the new Jackery with MPPT. All right, we're getting 62 watts. So let's go ahead now and plug into the old Jackery 500 with PWM charging. 61 watts, so just about the same. First up, the new Jackery with MPPT. So I'm just gonna stand a little bit away from the panel and I'm gonna shade one corner with my glove. So I only have one cell shaded. Let's see what the wattage is. Okay, so now the Jackery is show, showing charging at 59 watts. Let's go ahead and shade it again. This time I'm gonna walk past it like I am a giant cloud shading the panel. Now, does it recover quickly? Yeah, we're back to 59 watts. So let's go ahead and compare that to the old version that has PWM charging. Okay, 59 watts, just like the other one. I'm gonna shade one corner, one cell. Okay, it's shaded. Now I'm taking my hand away. You can see the results. Now I'm gonna go ahead and walk past it like a giant cloud. Should see the wattage dropping. And let's see how it recovers. Ah, so you see after the panel shaded, it now stays at 41 watts. And I bet you if I unplug it and plug it back in, we'll get 50 something again. There we go. See, that's the difference between a PWM controller and an MPPT. Now there's no surprises at all of any of these results. This is exactly the same results we got from the Explorer 500 when we first tested it last year. Um, the only thing I've noticed different is that it actually charges better in the sun with a solar panel because once the shade passes the panel or like a cloud or something shades the panel, the old version, and this was common with all Jackeries, if you shade that panel enough and it drops the voltage low enough, it won't recover. Now this new version with the better charge controller in it absolutely recovers and goes back to normal charging voltage. So that was like the big bug that they fixed. And this is across the line now. Now the other question I get on all these, can it be parallel? Can you hook multiple ones together? Can you replace the batteries? No, 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 no. None of these, unless I specifically say, has those features. Now that's a very rare circumstance where you can add batteries or parallel them or put them in series, those are usually the very high end, very expensive models. This is considered a mid-range power station. So in order to keep costs down, they don't have all that stuff that most people don't use anyway. Now I'm not gonna bother with the USB output rate check because the Explorer 500 still has the old archaic five volt fixed voltage ports. There's no quick charge on the 500. Unlike the new 300, which has quick charge. That, in fact, it was news to me that they even put MPPT in their product line. I found out because one of you guys told me in the comments and said something about it in the book. And I said, hey, Jackery, you guys updated your product and you didn't tell me. So I got them to send me a new one and I got to test it. And it looks like that's really the only difference. Besides, they did listen to something that I said. Check this out. 
Now, while they still have the gaudy Jackery logo on the top, all in big and this really horrible font, they took Power Outdoors off of here and instead put the model, Jackery Explorer 500. So yay for Jackery, they listened to me and changed it. I think that looks way better. And now there's no question what model it is. It's not Power Outdoors, it's the Explorer 500. So what do I like about the Explorer 500? Well, it's a solid product and the new MPPT charger is a very welcome change. No more of that wonky PWM charging where you shade a part of the solar panel and then the charging is permanently reduced until you unplug it and plug it back in. So that's finally been resolved. And as always with Jackery, the 12 volt output is regulated and rock solid at 10 amps will not have any problems whatsoever running things such as a CPAP machine off the 12 volts or a 12 volt refrigerator. That's exactly what these are designed to do. And that secretly larger battery that they didn't even tell anybody about, you're getting an extra 50 watt hours out of this over the old model. Now what don't I like about the Explorer 500? Well first of all the 500 is very long in the tooth. It came out about a year and a half ago. It's fallen way behind in the times compared to the competition. I was hoping with the updated Explorer 500, they would at least added quick charge ports to this, but they didn't make any changes besides the battery and the solar controller. That means if you need quick charge or power delivery, this is not the product for you. You'll wanna look for something else. And since Jackery did listen to me and they got rid of the power outdoors that used to be here, maybe they'll also take my advice and get rid of this and replace these six millimeter ports with something more useful. As for the price and discounts, unfortunately, Jackery changed their mind at the last minute and decided not to give me a special deal on the Explorer 500 or offer any kind of sale or any other incentive. So the current price on the Explorer 500 is $499, which is still good for what you're getting. However, Jackery is having a huge sale starting today through the 14th of October on the Explorer 1000, which is the bigger brother of this, and the Solar Saga 100 solar panel. So if you do get this and you want to get a solar panel with it, at least the solar panel is on sale. So use the links below in the description to get a whopping $100 off of the Explorer 1000. You can also use the link below to get $30 off the Solar Saga solar panel again through the 14th of October. And if you want to know more about the Explorer 1000, the bigger brother, I'll put a link up here where you can go and watch the original review I did of the Explorer 1000. Now, next week, Jackery is having a 20% off sale of their older products, the Explorer 240 and the Explorer 160. If you wanna be notified for that, be sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll send out a notification through the discussion tab. And you can also join our Facebook group, The Hobo Tech Crew, where I post sales and things there all the time. And you can also subscribe to my blog if you go to hobotech.tv slash blog, type in your email address, and anytime I update a video or there's a, some really big spectacular sale, you'll get an email about it, so you won't miss any special deals. Now what's the main competition for the Explorer 500? Well, obviously it's the Blue 80 AC50S, which is a model that everybody's been waiting to go on retail sale. It's currently still on pre-order, but it's only gonna be on pre-order for a short period of time. It's supposed to be out for retail sale this month, and I'm gonna release a video on that soon. So again, subscribe to stay tuned for that review. It's actually more bang for the buck than the Explorer 500. And if you're interested in the pre-order for the Blue Eddy AC50S, there's a link below in the description. You can get 50 bucks off. So what about the recommended solar panel for the Jackery Explorer 500? Well, for all Jackery products, I suggest getting a Jackery solar panel. They're just made for each other. Um, they're both very portable, very lightweight, and very durable. Jackery solar panels are some of the best on the market for portability, performance, weight, and longevity. And this week, you can get 30 bucks off the solar panel, so it's actually a pretty good deal. Now, for the Explorer 500, you'll want to get one 100-watt solar panel to charge it. If getting two is really not going to help you in this case. But if you're looking for a cheaper alternative to the Jackery Solar Saga panels, you can go to hobotech.tv slash Amazon on click on solar kits it'll take you down to all the other options that you can use now be warned that jackery products do not come with an adapter to use third-party panels they want you to use jackery panels if you want to use a third-party panel that has like an mc4 output you're going to need an adapter you can get those adapters on hobotech.tv slash Amazon. At the very bottom, go to solar adapters, and that'll take you to the eight millimeter to MC4 adapter that you would need to use for most of the Jackery products. Thanks for watching.
If you learned something today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Got Billy over here slaving away. <laughs> oh, this is gonna, this is it for the day. That pile, there was so much little shit, you know, like three inch cuts of wood, pieces of trash, you know. Crap, dude, you got that like totally cleaned up. Wow, that's a lot of wood. That was all hiding underneath there, yeah, huh? Yeah, and it's all good. Wow. So we could use that for firewood for, be great firewood. See, all the stuff you find on a homestead. This is buried under a giant pile of brush. RV Golf Guy, Z Foxfire, Jack Smith.